What's going on YouTube? This is Rabe, and today we're going to be doing something a little different. Uh, as you can see, I've got a Nerf double strike gun right here. And today what we're going to do is we are going to uh, go step by step together and actually disassemble and paint uh, this Nerf double strike. As you can see, it's a really cool design. Uh, and I just want to see how it'll look in, uh, in some, some different colors, some more, more metallics. Um, and just more, a little, a little more real-world colors other than this, uh, you know, Slimer green and uh, crazy neon orange. Uh, so yeah. So first thing you want to do <clears throat> when you've got a project like this is you want to make sure you've got your tools lined up. And for this particular uh, Nerf gun, and you know, different different projects may vary. Uh, you just want all we need for this is a uh, looks like a Phillips head screwdriver, and I've got mine right here. Uh, so what you want to do is make sure that the uh, tip of the screwdriver is small enough or thin enough and long enough to fit into all of the various holes uh, for the screws here. And as you can see in the handle of the gun, uh, it gets kind of deep. So you want to make sure that it not only fits into the holes themselves, but actually will go all the way down and actually hit that screw. Uh, and this one does just fine. So we're good there. Uh, next up, Got that and that you want to get yourself probably some plastic baggies um now i've gone with two here i've got one snack size bag and then i've got a uh, regular sandwich bag here uh, and this one i'm going to put all the screws into just so you don't lose them uh, because they'll have a tendency to roll and fly all over the place and then this guy is actually going to be for the internals of the gun so all the all the stuff inside here, all the springs and everything, any other screws that may be inside are going to go in this bag. That way, uh, you know, there's no confusion as to what belongs where. So those are really all you need to start out here. And uh, we're going to go ahead and disassemble the gun. Uh, so you want to make sure that the darts are out. And I'm just going to stick those in the internals bag uh, just to keep them, keep them together, just so we're not looking for them later. There we go, we've got our darts, and let's open up our little snack bag here to get our screws, and then we're just going to go ahead and uh, pop all these screws out. There we go. Very exciting stuff. So, <laughs> while I'm doing this, to entertain you guys, I guess. Uh, see, this this video is all about learning. I don't know about entertaining, but I suppose I could try. So, uh, I've been very, uh, very sparse with my videos as of late, and there is a very good, in my opinion, reason for that. And that is because my apartment building uh, hates me making videos, apparently. <laughs> uh, gosh. It's nothing out, you know. They're not outright hating. Uh, obviously, they don't. They don't care. But I don't know if you can hear this kind of blaring noise in the background. Um, but I live, uh, I live like less than a block away from uh, the center of my town, and uh, currently they are having an oyster festival right now. Uh, so I believe that is Brett Michaels singing in the background yes the brett michaels how very exciting um so i really really hope i don't get tagged on youtube for this uh for <laughs> song copyright because i do not want any music in this video at all um except probably i'll put some music at the beginning but it's gonna be you know my own music royalty free rather i should say kevin mcleod awesome um yeah so anyway there's that whole thing going on, the, the Oyster Festival right now. So I've got that noise in the background. There we have all of our screws out. And also, my apartment building has been doing uh, construction all summer long. All summer long. Every single day. All summer long. It started out, they were doing, I don't know, they were cleaning the bricks. Uh, I live in a brick building. They were cleaning the bricks uh, at the beginning of the summer, and that took weeks, and it was super noisy. They were like power spraying and all kinds of other stuff. And then after that, they were trimming bricks or re relaying bricks, and they were sawing all kinds of crazy noises, and that was a couple of weeks. And uh, 
now they're doing i don't even know what they're like repaving the outside area and it's loud and obnoxious and ah yeah it's just been never ending anyway so we have all of our screws out now all right and it's time to uh, you want to very carefully do this because a lot of times there are springs and they will like shoot out at you if you're not careful um uh, i think i think we've got all the all of it this guy wants to hold tight ah oh, there we go so just very gently kind of rock it back and forth kind of just let it let it come naturally and there we go beautiful we have the uh first chunk of our uh, thing here and there may be a little grease on here that's just from the uh, mechanics the internals here to pay no mind to that and it looks like we should be mostly in the clear so we're gonna pull out very carefully grab the um, the rail uh, mount I guess you'd call it and that's gonna be on this big short thick spring okay I've just got grease all over my hands from the uh, from the internals you can kind of see it there's a layer of this lubricant to help the uh, help the plunger mechanism work uh, so you want to just grab this and you can pop the spring off and just pop it in here with the internals because I'll be painting the uh, there we go because I'll be painting this bit as well so we just put that aside all right now for the internals themselves you just want to make sure you're very careful because they are strong springs uh, that you'll have to have to remember how to get back into place and as a matter of fact give me just one second this is always a good idea what you want to do <clears throat> is uh, grab yourself a camera <laughs> and actually um, take a picture there we go take a picture of the internals of the gun uh, before you take them apart that way if you have any confusion about where stuff goes uh, when it's time to reassemble everything you can you can do that fairly easily so uh, then next we're just gonna kind of pull this stuff up and it's gonna want to shoot all over the place just kind of you know you pull it out make sure you're in control <laughs> and uh, just dump the internals in into the uh, bag here Looks like that. There we go. This piece. Here's where it's going to become a little tricky. Uh, Alright, so we've got all this stuff going on here. And obviously, so we want to pull the plunger out. Uh, we are going to end up painting this bit. But, hmm. <laughs> So sometimes you get a little, little, little tricky, tricky bits like this. Um, and I don't think, yeah, it is just the way it is. All right, so you want to take this out, and uh, you want to just be very careful with it because, as you can see, it's it's got the, the lubricant all over it, and it is also all over on this side as well. Um, we're just going to leave this as one piece and I'm going to end up wa wiping the lubricant off of the outside because I'm going to be painting this whole bit. Uh, so just put that aside for now. Um, this bit is going to be a little more tricky. Uh, so what you want to do is we're actually going to take, just use your finger. It's soft plastic here, um, but you're going to take this and just kind of pull it up and hopefully we can actually get it over this pin. Yeah, just like so. No, all right. Doesn't want to. Doesn't want to play nice. So you may. Hmm. I was hoping this wouldn't require any like additional tools. Hopefully we can get this going. All right. Let's try this. Let's try this. There we go. All right. <laughs> it wasn't pretty, but we got it out. Just uh, use a little bit of force, I guess. And this, I think I want to put 
separately just to keep keep all this uh, grease intact. Um, so I'm going to put it off to the side for the moment, but uh, you want to put that probably in its own bag. Okay? Okay. So we've got this. Um, I want this little rubber band. It's just, I think, used to, uh, to stop the hammer from smashing against the, the body of the gun. Uh, so that's fine. That can even just stay. Whatever. It's not a big deal. Um, so we have this. We're going to paint this bit. We're going to paint the uh, paint the trigger. And then inside there's, of course, the, uh, the spring for the trigger itself. And we'll be painting that as well. So that's it for disassembly. And uh, we'll be right back to, uh, to start painting. All right, guys. It's time to put the base coat on our things. I'm not going to bother priming this. You may want to prime it before you uh, paint. Uh, just make sure that it's a primer that's made for uh, plastics. Otherwise, it'll um, probably crinkle up on you. Um, so for my paint, I think for the for the main body, I'm going to just go in with a Rust-Oleum Metallic. This one is Metallic Copper. And uh, one-handed, I'm going to pull the cap off. Shake it up. <clears throat> Ow. I'm doing this indoors. You should do this outside, guys. <laughs> um, I have, you know, I have a mask and things that I can wear, uh, you know, like good painting equipment to wear inside for doing this. And I have the windows open uh, to make sure it's ventilated. Um, but you should really ideally be doing this outside. Um, unfortunately, I'm stuck in here because of the noise and trying to let you guys actually hear me. And my backyard is a complete construction zone right now. So you've got the paint. You want to make sure you uh, just make sure it's it's flowing properly. Just use a little corner somewhere out of the way, piece of cardboard, whatever, like I've got here. And uh, basically, you just want to go hold your hold your can about 10 inches away or so. Just get short short little bursts. You don't want to overdo it because you don't want the paint to start. Uh, start uh, beating up and, and getting a lot of blobs on there you don't want blobs guys blobs are bad bad blobs so as you can see we've got we got a base coat started on here it's looking pretty snazzy pretty shiny and uh, yeah we're just gonna kind of let that sit for a little bit as you can see the zombie symbol is still on there um, I didn't bother to take it off. You can you can get that off with some uh, some rubbing alcohol uh, and like you know just a, a paper towel or something or some nail polish remover, something like that that has a, I believe it's acid acetone in it <laughs> acetate something. There's you know you can use chemicals to remove that, um, but for this I'm just gonna leave it on there because it doesn't. It's once it's all done, it's not really gonna make that that big a difference. Um, yeah. So once you got your base coat done, uh, you just want to kind of let it uh, let it really uh, dry up really nicely, and then you can uh, kind of touch it up and and move on to the next step. So I'm gonna stop the video right now. We're gonna let this just dry. I'll see you guys in just a. Okay, guys. Um, I hope you cannot hear. Brett Michaels yelling in the background. Uh, yeah. Um, he just got finished singing Talk Dirty to me. <laughs> but more importantly, at least to me anyway, uh, we've got our double strike finished. Well, not finished, but we got the main body uh, painted, and I'm pretty happy with the uh, with the results. Nice, uh, nice, solid and uh, smooth looking finish on there that's pretty good uh, and so we're gonna move on to the barrel uh, which is right here and the other silver bits and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and use some uh, alligator clips here uh, for this oh, and there goes the band starting right up again all right cool beans ah. so I'm trying to do this one-handed mm. Here we go. Okay, cool. <laughs> All right. So, 
Oh man, I, it's so distracting. The music, I can't help, I can't stand it. Uh, it's going in. All right, so we've got our barrel up there I'm, uh, and our uh, trigger. These are all going to be the same color, and the uh, and the hammer. We're going to go ahead and put that in there as well. Um, I don't know what. Um, hopefully the paint won't ruin this thing. I'm afraid that getting it off of here might might do something bad to it. Uh, so I'm just going to leave it on there. Um, but yeah, hopefully uh, hopefully nothing bad will happen. Uh, and for this, we're going to use, where, where's my paint? Right here. Uh, very, very cheapo stuff. Color place, uh, fast dry spray paint. Thank you. Thank you, motorcycle. Um, and this is, of course, silver aluminum. Uh, so, yeah, that's going to be our silver color that we're going to use for the barrel and stuff. And you, you guys, of course, please, uh, if, if you're going to do a Nerf gun, maybe choose whatever colors you want man don't don't feel like this is this is what i'm telling you you have to do you just gotta make this your own guys there's no point in customizing if it's not custom yeah so just shake it up uh make sure you do a little dab over there just to make sure it's actually coming out correctly and then i uh, just get a couple light light coats on there just just to cover it up. We can move this around. Oh man. So, uh, <laughs> shameless plug. If you guys feel, you know, if you're feeling generous, if you if you got some extra cash, you know, burning a hole in your pocket, feel free to donate. You know, so I can get like a you know, one of those cool GoPro cameras and, and mount it to my uh, my head or something like that, and then I'll you know I'll be able to do this a lot more professionally. Uh, so we got that going on. I think I'm gonna let that sit for now. We'll just do a quick, uh, quick one. So we're just quick, short strokes, just like that. We'll have to, of course, go over it again. But um, yeah, yeah. So uh, we're gonna let that sit, let that dry, uh, and of course I'm gonna go back off camera and just, uh, you know, kind of clean it up, make sure I'm getting in all the little cracks and crevices because there's still a lot of orange left on there and maybe I'll just do that real quick now. Um, and then once we have all the base coat kind of stuff done then we can really start getting in and do the finer details. Uh, but I'm gonna let this sit and dry and I will see you guys in just a second. Okay guys so now we kind of have our silver bits pretty much done here. Um, you can see the hammer is nice and well coated like so and the uh, trigger is also nice and there may still be, I mean you may end up with a little bit of orange you know just along the inside here uh, but that you can touch up later if you want to, you know if you prefer just touch it up with a brush uh, when you're doing the detailing so it's really not not terrible um, yeah so this guy what we're gonna do now is as you can see I kinda went and did a little bit of a uh, black on the, the top there and we're just gonna go ahead and grab these guys, get them out of the way you're gonna get your uh, super cheapy I'm using uh, just spray paint, <laughs> fast dry spray paint um, there we go, and the object here and again, just test it. This is a really, really bad can. Uh, it does tend to, to spray wildly. So just, you know, you guys hopefully will have a new can and it won't give you the same troubles. But we're, I'm just going to do the best I can with what I got here. Um, so as you saw, what you want to do is just give it a quick, just like that, over the front. Really not even, not even trying to coat the whole thing necessarily, uh, but just kind of get get some spray going and then on the side you just want to go just over the, the tips of the barrels just stay pretty far and don't do a solid spray just kind of just like that see that see that just to kind of give it the uh, kind of burnt appearance like it's you know seen a lot of use I do the same on this side 
little more dark. There we go. A little darker on the tip there. And then there you go. And those are your barrels. And you just want to stand it up and let it dry. And then once that's done, actually I think what we may do is kind of an experiment. I'm going to move this out of the way to dry off to the side here. Move this out of the way. And I'm going to grab this guy. Uh, it's Rust-Oleum Metallic. It's Metallic Oil Rub Bronze. And it's really dark. You can see I sprayed some over here. It's very dark. Um, but I'm just going to kind of experiment a little bit. Just give it a spritz over here. There we go. Uh, so as you can see, that comes out really quickly and really dark. So you want to hold it back as far away as you can, if you're even going to bother doing this. Um, but I'm just going to go ahead and give this guy just a little bit of a spritz around, just to kind of make it look a little, a little dirty, a little worn. Um, and I'm honestly not sure how I feel about that, but you know, I think it'll look kind of neat when it's dried. Uh, so I'm going to put this off to the side here. We're going to do the same to the other side, uh, holding it as far away as possible. You just want kind of the overspray to hit hit the the weapon itself. This is really powerful stuff. So yeah, so that's pretty much it. And you know, don't don't worry if you know you get a little too much because you can always touch it up by hand, or you know just go you know put another coat of the base base spray on and uh, you should be fine. But I'm gonna go ahead and let these guys dry. Put that back in there. Uh, and then when we come back, we're gonna start doing the hand detailing. So I'll see you guys then. Okay guys, it is time for some hand painting. How excited are you? I'm very excited. Uh, so we have our, our halves here, our main, main bits. And um, they look pretty good. I kind of like how the uh, the darker color turned out. It we did get a, a couple little splotches here and there, but uh, that we can just kind of uh, you know do do with some uh, some detailing work. We can get kind of get rid of that. Uh, but for the most part, I kind of like how how it kind of darkened it up just a little bit. Um, but right now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start going over the uh, the handle bits here. Uh, we're going to save this part for last because it's it's wrapped up over uh, all of this stuff. So you want to put down the, the undercoat first and then we'll deal with the uh, the, the linen wrap. Uh, so what we're going to do, we got our supplies here. We have our uh, little Pokemon <laughs> uh, jelly glass with some, some just cool water in it. Uh, we've got our Bucket-O brushes. Mm-hmm. Although I have a few brushes that I, I picked out over here that I think should be fine for the job. Uh, we've got a little paper towel to wipe off our brushes. And we have our palette, also known as a paper plate. Uh, but you can use whatever. I, you can see I cut up a grocery bag here. You can use a chunk of grocery bag uh, for this purpose as well. This is mostly just for, you know mixing colors and you know thinning thinning out you know whatever whatever you might run into uh, and then you can of course see the colors in the background here the, the paints um, I just grabbed a bunch of stuff uh, I don't know that we'll be using all of these actually I'm quite sure we won't be using all of these um, but there are some like this uh, this wrought iron has a nice kind of dark green color to it, uh, and, it and it looks pretty good as like um, oxidized bronze uh, so it should look pretty good in some some little spots here and there um, but yeah so I think for the uh, handle here uh, I think I'm just gonna go with a nice brown uh, probably this guy right here the raw sienna or possibly even uh, this guy was the burnt sienna uh, which is a little more of a red 
then then this one this one's definitely more of a chocolate brown but uh, we'll see we'll see how it works I, I may end up going with this one because it is a bit darker and I kind of want to have that contrast because this is you know this is going to be a little bit too close in color to, to the main body I feel uh, so I may end up going with the darker color of course uh, and that's basically what we're going to do so we're just going to shake up our paint Get, uh, grab a little plate here. <laughs> Get a little dollop. And we'll start going. And I'm just going to go ahead and use this, this brushy brush just because I like it. And really, all we're doing is putting uh, a base coat down. So you don't have to be too crazy with it. You're not, ex you know, we're not expecting to have everything look perfect with this first coat. It's going to require a couple of different coats because you're, because uh, using acrylics first of all, which are a little, you know, not quite as thick as other paints, uh, but also because you're painting over a metallic, which is going to, you know, it's going to catch the light and want to really show through where you don't, you know wherever there's a little gap or anything but so we got that going so far uh, this this particular texture on here is not necessarily doesn't say wood grain to me um, but we're going with brown anyway just cuz I want to have that you know I just want a different color on here other than like copper or silver because uh, I don't want it to be just all this, you know, all too, too similar. Do, 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 just getting a little gap there. Just, you know, a little, little light coat to start with. Uh, once you, you know, once you get the first coat on that, that puts the paint on the surface and then after that, <clears throat> the rest of the paint will really want to grab onto that first coat. Uh, so it'll make it easier and easier to, uh, to really thicken that up. So, uh, then we're just going to go ahead and do this bit. Just follow the lines as best you can. Remember, it doesn't have to be perfect because, you know, you're going to come in here and you're going to detail, you're going to put some weathering on here, uh, and that can really help hide those, you know, if, if you have some sloppy edges. It's not, not the end of the world, guys. So there we have our first coat of brown on there, and uh, looks decent. Yeah, I think I like that. Uh, so we'll just wash our brush real quick here. Remember not to leave your brush in the water. You don't want to. You don't want to store it like like that because it will bend the tip of the brush. It'll you know fan it out, and then it will never paint the same again. Uh, but just quick, quick rinse in the water, and quick dab on the that you can see came came clean, very nice. Uh, so we're gonna let that kind of go. I may try and sneak, I'll grab a slightly smaller brush, and what I think I want to do is grab this metallic gunmetal gray. Shake it up. And ideally, you want to let everything kind of uh, dry before you start something else, you know what I mean? 
Uh, you don't want to get, you don't want to, you know, be working on this and then move on to this and like grab it by one of the uh, wet paint bits. But since, uh, just for the sake of this tutorial video, whatever, I'm just going to go ahead and just try and be mindful of that. Just be careful. And we're just going to go in here. Paint this little bit just to get a base coat on. And remember, just just be light. Just use the tip of your brush. You don't have to you don't have to jam the whole uh, brush head in there. For best results, use it use it as though it were a pencil. That's that's you know. Best, best advice I can give. Now, kind of annoyingly, it doesn't seem the the, the texture doesn't go onto the front, so it just kind of stops right there. Um, so I guess I'll stop there as well. But uh, yeah, so we got we've got basically all the separate colors going that we're gonna do and uh, I'm gonna let this dry and when we come back we'll uh, we'll start putting some more coats on so I'll see you guys in just a moment all right guys so here is our piece at the moment I've got uh, a couple of coats of this guy on here the uh, the gunmetal gray I've got I believe this is two coats of the brown and it's looking pretty good so far I may actually use a couple of different colors of brown instead of putting more coats on this I may put a light wash of another color a lighter color uh, just to kind of give this a little bit of a worn look a um, little bit more of a patina and maybe even a darker brown uh, just to kind of get the edges a little darker here uh, but it's looking decent uh, so what I'm gonna do now is we're gonna do our uh, the the handle wrapping so we're gonna take our white, and you can use whatever whatever color white makes you happy. Uh, you may want to choose one with a little, just a little hint of yellow in it. Um, but <laughs> I'm just gonna go with straight white. There is paint on this. You can see there we go. Uh, so you know, same thing as before. You just want to get some on your brush and kind of. Uh, I just lightly get it started just be careful with the edges remember you don't have to go all the way to the edge if you don't want to to start you can always just go in with a smaller brush afterward and uh, touch up the edges which is usually a lot easier to deal with We're just going to get one solid coat on here. Just enough to kind of get the, uh, just to get the, the, the paint, uh, onto the, uh, onto the plastic or onto the spray paint, I guess at this point. Um, and that will, you know, you're putting the texture of the paint onto this surface and uh, when it dries it's going to become you know coarse and it's going to much more easily pick up more coats of paint uh, which is what we want to do okay. And the acrylic is good because it, it's kind of, it's not terribly, terribly thick. So you, it's going to kind of flatten itself out as it dries. You don't want, you don't want crazy amounts of like, you know, bubbles and drips in there. But if you just spread it out a little bit, it should help to, uh, kind of even itself out.
If you see any noticeable buildup of paint in any one spot, you can just go over it real quickly uh, just to spread it out. Make sure you have some good music on in the background while you do this too. <laughs> helps the time pass you know all right so that's our wrapping so far does not look fantastic um, but once it dries once we get some extra coats of paint on there uh, you're really gonna see a difference so we're gonna let that dry I'm just gonna go ahead and put the the rest of the coats of paint on there once that's once this is dry and then when we come back we're gonna start the real uh, fine detailing work the aging and all that kind of stuff so I'll see you guys then. All right guys, so while we're waiting for the white to paint on the handles of these guys, uh, what we can do is do a little bit of aging on the silver pieces. Uh, so you can see here's our, uh, here's our barrel. And I've actually gone ahead and started the, uh, the aging on this side just to see how it would come out, just to make sure I wasn't leading you guys astray. And I, I, I like it, I think it looks pretty good. It's got a nice, nice patina on it. Um, so what we're going to do for this is we're going to take our gunmetal gray. Uh, should still have some here, but we're just going to add a little bit more. Uh, here we go. Just bit, poot that right out. Um, and then you want to get, uh, we're going to do some dry brushing. Uh, now I've got a couple of really well, <laughs> well seasoned uh, dry brushing brushes uh, you can see here uh, and of course you can use whatever you have um, this one is actually uh, brand new that I just grabbed uh, and so we'll be using oh not this one this is, this is uh, yeah this one was too hard uh, so we're not gonna be using this one um, we're gonna be using this guy and it is uh, new, It's well it's clean I should say, it's not new, but it doesn't have dried paint on the bristles. Uh, but basically what we're gonna do, if you haven't ever done dry brushing before, uh, you wanna just get some paint on the tip of your brush and then just dab it on a plate or, or something, some, you know, some surface to get the majority of the paint off. So you're just leaving just a little like kind of you know basically the paint is almost dry and you're, you're almost dry, brushing on dry paint uh, so what what that's going to do is we're just gonna go just like so and you can see hopefully that uh, you've got the paint going onto the surface in kind of a, a little pattern where it just it looks more natural. It's almost it's almost a gradient effect. Actually, I could use a little a little more paint. It's a little little bright. There we go. So we'll just do that. We'll get it all over. Even though uh, this really doesn't get shown uh, when the gun is all finished, except for the the actual Nerf logo. But uh, it's it's also a good way. You want as much excess paint off of the brush as possible, and having an out of the way spot like this to kind of, kind of let it uh, go onto is always good. So we're gonna do that, and we'll get up here on the edges. So it's looking, it's looking decent, I think. It's got a nice kind of mottled look to it now. Um, as though it's seen a lot of wear and it's got a lot of good age on it so I like that so we're gonna put that off to the side to uh, to dry once I just finish up a couple little spots here and there on the uh, 
on the barrels. Let it be a little bit darker on the barrels. Basically any part that your hand would touch uh, is, is kind of where you want to put uh, darker color because the, the oils from your skin get onto the metals of the, of the weapon and they'll, uh, they'll age it like that. So, so for here, you definitely want a good, good bit on here. So essentially the, the silver that we put on there is going to basically be a little more than a base coat. Cause it's really for a piece like this, we're really going to rely on, uh, the, uh, the dry brushing to kind of give us that that look so you can see it's almost got like a hammered effect and I think it looks pretty good so we're gonna put that off to dry off to the side here just like so and then the uh, the uh, trigger of course another heavily touched bit as well so that's going to get a lot of uh, a lot of wear on it as well and we'll do that and I think that looks pretty good all right excellent uh, last but not least we have our little uh, uh, our little clip little end strike rail system clip and this we're just gonna put on there and I may end up actually uh, doing a hand brush on this guy uh, just because a lot of that orange is still showing when I painted all this stuff to record I honestly forgot uh, to paint this guy it fell behind uh, the box I was painting in so it did not get painted but there we go it doesn't have to be pretty the majority of this will be hidden uh, with inside the gun anyway so all right so we are going to let the white coats <laughs> the yeah the coats of white on the handles finish drying completely um, I'll add another one to two possible uh, coats on that because uh, as you can see it's uh, there's still some bleed through I don't want any bleed through on this so it's gonna be at least another coat maybe two more um, and then I'll be satisfied but we're gonna let that dry I'm just gonna touch this up a little bit here and then I will see you guys in just a moment all right guys so we've got the white done I'm I'm happy with that it's uh it's nice and thick there's not a lot of bleed through and uh, the the very very little that there is we can deal with um, with using some other things uh, so <clears throat> basically what we're gonna do now is uh, we're gonna put a patina on the rest of the uh, the gun here and to do that what I'm gonna do is uh, basically the same thing we did before we're gonna take our uh, I'm going to take our dry brush and I'm going to use the wrought iron color that I've got here. <clears throat> and just put a little, come on, just a little dab. There we go. Wants to be difficult. That's fine. Um, just a little bit. Get our brush going. And I want this to be real light because I don't want this to be all crazy so uh, what we're gonna do we're just gonna start around here all the places that really see a lot of use the trigger especially of course um, basically all the edges we just kind of go around that up here on the rail get that going On all the uh, all the curved surfaces, just get going up here. Pretty much, 
pretty much everywhere. Just <laughs> kind of, you kind of want to just go follow the edges. And, uh, you know, just make it look good. It doesn't have to be pretty, or it doesn't have to be shiny to be pretty, rather. It can be, it can be aged and old looking. Still, in my opinion, look pretty darn beautiful. Over here, get some going over here. And there we go. Now it's nice and uh, nice and weathered looking. It actually looks, it's hard to say. It looks almost more three dimensional because it's got, I mean, it is three dimensional, obviously. It's, you know, <laughs> an actual thing, but it just looks a lot better. Uh, you know, once you, once it's got a lot more character. It's got a lot more life to it now. Um, let's pop a little more in here and then yeah, there you go. It's looking good. <clears throat> All right, so we've got that done. We're gonna go ahead and clean our brush quickly here. Get that out of the way. And then we want to add <clears throat> add some color to the handle here. Uh, and to do that, I'm gonna go ahead and use my other uh, dry brush just get a little bit of some honey brown and just very lightly just get that kinda get that going it's very very light and you can even just go over it with your fingertip and just kind of blend it in a little bit because you just want it to look you know just old loved <laughs> not not like somebody you know painted it so much you know That you can even get a, a softer brush if you'd like. Just give it a little bit, just very gently, just to kind of lighten the color up a little bit, you know? Just kind of get a little life in it. And uh, <clears throat> it starts to, uh, starts to look pretty nice, I think. You know so uh, I think that's pretty good and what we're gonna do next is we're gonna get our dry brush again uh, we're gonna get ourselves a nice bright metallic bronze here I'm just gonna pour a little bit of this out I'll just use the same there we go, and it's pretty close in color to our base color, maybe even a little bit lighter, and that's exactly what we want. Uh, so we're gonna take our dry brush again. Get that going, and then we're gonna just uh, make a few few marks here and there. And these, uh, this is gonna be real real subtle um, basically what we're doing is just kind of going over the edges of this and just kind of making it look like uh, you know it's had some uh, had some use going on here Here and there, 
don't have to go crazy with it because the color is so similar that it's really just you, you guys can even just skip this all together it's not really a big you're not gonna make a huge difference with this but uh we can always also use this opportunity to like chop touch up if you uh you know miss miss some spots or wanted to add a little bit here and there uh now is the now is the time But I mean, once you're happy with that, <clears throat> and again, it's it's such a subtle, subtle thing that it doesn't it it doesn't take much. So once you're good with that, uh, we can actually start um, putting this thing back together. Uh, oh wait, no, 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 one more thing. All right, give me one second. I'll be right back. <clears throat> All right, guys. So last but not least, we got to deal with this uh, wrapped handle. And what I want to do here is just get a nice thin but a very soft brush, dip it in some water. You probably want to use some uh, clean water uh, for this, but I'm just going to use the dirty water because lazy. So <laughs> just make sure it's good and wet and not too much uh, paint on that. And then you just want to kind of follow the lines very, very lightly of the wrapping. We're just going to follow the lines just like so. It's okay if it gets a little heavy in spots, that's fine. Just want you to do. Wanna follow the lines. Just like that. And then just take a uh, cloth or something and just kinda lightly brush it over just to uh, kinda soften soften the lines, kind of smooth it out a little bit. And there you go. Pretty good, right? Looks kind of nice. Uh, this side came out a little heavier <laughs> than I would have liked. I do the other side off camera as kind of, you know, make sure everything works properly, but I think, uh, I think they look pretty good together. I may actually add a little more uh, just just to the edges here. You can see. Kind of doing that just to kind of get a nice effect going. And then we'll uh, just brush it. So what that does is it gets most of the paint off, but it still leaves the, the basic color behind. And this helps to just kind of blend it in so it's not a harsh, harsh line of paint just stopping all of a sudden there. But uh, there you go. I think that looks pretty good. So uh, I'm going to pause the video one last time. Then we're going to put everything together and see how our uh, Nerf Double Strike came out. So I'll see you guys in just a minute. Alright guys. Let's just let that truck pass, and uh, now we can get our Nerf gun back together. So I've gone and done the difficult parts already. I reattached the uh, plunger to the um, to the hammer. Uh, I do some pliers for that, so you may want to get some help um, or you know whatever with that thing. Um, we're gonna go ahead and pop the spring back on this little guy right now, just to get that done and out of the way. And uh, I also put the trigger back in, and that was kind of a pain in the butt because you got to get the little spring back on. Uh, and I don't know if this is actually the original position of the spring, but I mean it's it's uh, it's in there, it's secure, it's happy, 
Uh, so as long as it doesn't interfere with any of the other parts, we should be good. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and lower our hammer and such in. Just put that right back. I'm going to make sure this gets on there. There we go. Just like so. Um, now we got to go ahead and grab this piece and this. I'm going to slide these guys back on like so. And this whole jobber is going to come right up in here. Yep. Taking these apart is a lot easier than getting them back together. That's just that's the bottom line there. But it can be done like so. All right. So we got that done. Paint is still intact. We're good. Uh, and now this piece just comes on to kind of secure everything in place. Once I actually get that in, I'll feel much happier. There we go. That is in. Let's get our little, uh, this guy going here. That guy just goes, sneaks right in up top. Just like so. And we're going to put this two pieces, two halves together. We can actually take a look at how this guy is or in hand. Let's give this a All right. I like it. I think it looks pretty neat. So let's just go ahead and get the screws in and we will be good to go. All the screws are the same length, which is good. It's always a plus. Now, if you want to, you can go through afterwards and just with a small brush, you can get inside all the screw holes because they, some of them may have, you know, been missed by the paint. Um, but I'm not going to concern myself about that too much right now. Let's just get this all together. There you go. Make sure you don't over tighten the screws. Just make sure they're in securely. And once they start giving you, you know, a lot of, a lot of resistance, just let them, let them be. And uh, yeah, simple stuff. Simple stuff. Now this is a project you could do, you know, in just an afternoon. It could just take you one day, a uh, quick, quick project, and uh, you're, you're good to go. Especially if you have somebody to help. I mean, the real, the real time spent is in, you know, waiting for paint to dry, because uh, the actual painting part of it really doesn't take that long. I mean, you guys saw. I mean, just applying extra coats of stuff. It's a couple minutes here and there. Um, it's really not bad overall. Go. Easy stuff, guys. Easy stuff. Uh, you just want to remember that uh, once you no longer have an orange tip on here, uh, your your Nerf gun is an inside-only gun. Okay, um, it's not. Uh, I don't believe it's even legal to have these like outside. I don't know if it's, I don't know about the legality. You'll have to look into that yourselves. But uh, I do know that it's just not not wise practice to have to mess with these once you've painted them outside. Um, so what you could do is get some uh, uh, like electrical tape. See if they have electrical tape in orange or something like that. I wouldn't suggest duct tape because you're going to end up destroying their paint with that. Um, but if you can find some non-destructive uh, paint to just kind of uh, wrap around the barrel of your gun uh, to kind of make it, you know, back to where it should be, um, I think that will help out. So, a little bit of stick in the trigger from the paint, but not bad. That'll uh, sort itself out, and we'll just make sure. Let's load it up and just make sure that works. 
bam. And second time. Bam, excellent. So, there we have it guys. Another painting project done. Looks really nice. Uh, I like how this came out, it looks pretty cool. Um, yeah, yeah, so thanks for uh, hanging out with me uh, and, and painting our Nerf Double Strike. Um, so, best of luck to you guys doing this kind of project on your own. It's, it's, uh, it's a fun thing to do, it's really rewarding uh, seeing what you come up with in the end. And, and remember guys, make it your own. You don't have to follow you know, what I say here. Just figure stuff out it's it's a good time so thank you guys so very much for watching as always i really do appreciate it uh, don't forget to like comment subscribe all that good stuff um i'm gonna have to start painting some zoids or, or you guys are gonna kill me i think so <laughs> uh, on to more painting projects and i will see you guys in the next one thanks again for watching bye for now Woo. very nice